Well, welcome to Backstage with Jeffrey Morrissey. I'm your host, Jeffrey Morrissey. We are about as far from Backstage as you can get. We are at a Starbucks on Newberry Street, but it's the company we that matters. Indeed. Josiah Johnson is joining me today. Josiah, how are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, I have a, I've just eaten a banana, and it's cold outside, and it's warm in here, so I'm feeling good. But the sweater does look warm. It's a, it's a dashing red sweater. Uh, it's actually my friends own a clothing company called Fairty Brand. Oh, okay. uh, that yeah, it's my friends. It's my friend's sweater. There we go. A good plug indeed. Uh, <laughs> so this is a great uh, sort of concept. It's a show at the Patagonia store tonight, uh, announced probably 24 hours ago. So how did this come about from your end? And it's all going to uh, the charity One Percent too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, th I think it's not necessarily like ticketed, so it's all going is nothing. <laughs> but it's more just like all awareness is going to One Percent for the Planet, um, which is. Um, uh, a nonprofit that kind of encourages businesses and and individuals too to donate one percent of what they of their profits for the year to to environmental organizations and they do the work also of like vetting to make sure that those organizations are actually doing work that's making a difference um, and yeah so Pat Patagonia is is a uh, is a B corporation which means that like their bottom line is decided not just by how much money they make, but how much money they make and what impact they do. So, mm -hmm. so Patagonia and One Percent for the Planet is kind of like a has just been like a group that it's been fun to do a small amount of work with to raise awareness for donating to environmental causes. Nice. Well, uh, everyone's looking forward to the show. Uh, and as I was researching some of your background today, one of the things that I found fascinating, a math and computer science double major in college. Where did you find that? Uh, an interview that you gave with a Dutch television station in 2011. You I, are a master of uh, research. Yeah, I, that, I try. Yeah. What, what could I say? I, I did a double major in math and computer science in college. Which I don't necessarily think of with uh, songwriting, but I forget who I was talking to, and he, or it was uh, Jake from Modern Baseball, and he was like, I look at it as an equation where I have to have my lyrics fit the music, fit all this. So how does that sort of background, does it influence your songwriting at all? Do you look at things in a more sort of technical, structured, precise way, or, or is this just your creative outlet where you can abandon all rules? Uh, man, there's so many parts of that question. <laughs> which is good. No, 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 which is good. I know. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to learn how to stop apologizing so much. Um, but uh, but here we are, um, post apology. Um, <laughs> uh, I think so. One aspect of it is that my brain likes making logical sense of things, which in music means that like I'm really I, like my it makes sense like how to arrange like harmonies and and like the chord chord progressions. But uh, so there's like strengths in that. And then I've also found that there's weaknesses in that because I do it in like a very kind of by the book way and have to move my brain from logical. S you know, it's like a lot of work to get into a space where I can move my brain from mm -hmm. whichever side is the logical side into the more free flowing uh, connecting random elements mm -hmm. side of your brain. Um, so it's been I'd say there's like strengths and weaknesses to it. Um, but it's definitely been like a learning process to like get out of my logical side to get into the creative side. Well, then you throw a whole other monkey wrench in that when perhaps you write a solo song, but then it gets adapted by like a, the band or something like that. Oh and man, you have I'm very like, <laughs> it's something that I really, letting go of like control of how I think that it should be is something that's very challenging for me. Um, so I don't know whether that, that's where you're going with it, but it's definitely like I write a song and I'm like, oh, this is how it is. And then mm. it's like a whole another thing to just be like, OK, you guys can change it. No, exactly, because yeah. it's like throwing a monkey wrench into that yeah. logic. It was yeah. supposed to sound yeah. this way. So yeah. that, that's cool. I, I like sort of uh, admitting that. But you're doing a solo show tonight yeah. um, and you've been doing you did a solo tour in October. Yeah. And I think that I know the answer to this after talking a little bit. But does the solo stuff, is that something that comes more natural to you? Are you more comfortable <laughs> with a band? How, what's the sort of your sweet spot? Yeah, um, I think when I'm to play music with people mm -hmm. and especially to like arrange music with people in the way that like a band like a it's one thing to like have people like back you up but mm -hmm. it's another thing to be in a band where there's actually like give and take and push and pull and to be in that environment like is a, is a kind of an, a strangely intimate thing and requires a lot of trust uh, um, 
and um, and so it's um, I think it's it's really wonderful when I can be in that situation when I do feel close enough to people to be able to like give a song that like I've spent a lot of time on my own birthing mm -hmm. uh, to then be like changed um, and and that's like a really wonderful thing to be able to do um, but it's also challenging like right yeah you know, right now with with head in the heart like I had to take a couple years off and mm -hmm. worked on uh, getting sober which was so hard and so worthwhile uh, but like coming the the possibility of like rejoining the band at some point is like there's a monkey wrench of like it actually requires like repairing and, and mending like relationships in a really like in a very uh, intimate way to get back to that space where you feel like that that trust and that safety to to be creative in a really deep way so I think like without the by default I definitely like to have control but it's also really nice when I have a close enough relationship with someone where I can feel trusting and safe enough to share the responsibility of creating if that makes sense no it totally does and one of the things that I was going to thank you for was your openness with the hiatus and I, I think that you helped a lot of people there because usually that's something that gets swept under the rug never talked about but it's something that's having its sort of day in the light the the amount that we need to be thinking about uh, recovery so I can't thank you enough yeah. um, especially here in the Bay State it's something that we've been struggling with for quite some time yeah it's like the epicenter in some ways of at least opioid stuff is yeah is like the Cape like Cape Cod and New England in general and, um, right yeah uh, no, like no no we're really at a point where yeah. everyone knows someone yeah. which is uh, just fascinating and, and very sad at the same time. Yeah. But uh, again, thank you so much. And uh, speaking of that hiatus, during that time, was staying creative something that was helpful for you? Or oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was really great, actually. I had, I had kind of, um, as the band kind of, as the band was happening and was very busy, I, like, developed some poor coping skills to deal with all of the stress of that. Um, and I had um, gotten to a place where I was putting a lot of like pressure on on a song that would that I would start to come to be like this has to be great because now it's your job and um, which isn't like the best spot to be in if you're trying to like birth this like delicate little you know uh, song baby into the world um, and and so getting sober and being a little more like broken wide open in terms of feelings uh and and not and and not thinking about the songs so much mm. uh as like these are going to the band but thinking of them as like my therapy and <laughs> my way of like processing what was going on um opened me up a lot to 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 like not non-judgment of of what came which I was like, I wrote more songs in the last couple of years than I did in like the last six years before that while the band was active. Um, um, just because it like took on a different meaning and a different usefulness to me. So it was super helpful. And do you think we'll see those songs under your own name at some point released? Or? Probably, yeah. Good. Yeah, that's something that I'm working on. Well, I, I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, and then one of the things, I saw a video from one of this, uh, the tour that you were doing and uh, you were doing solo shows for the most part, it was just you. And then there are some where, I think it's in Burlington, where it had you doing Rivers and Roads, and I couldn't hear you. All I yeah. could hear was that crowd yeah. singing along. I mean, yeah. obviously a song with so much meaning, yeah. and I'll get to the public ownership of that record in a second, but yeah. like, uh, we will never experience this. So tell me, what is it like when you're on a stage and there are so many people singing back something that you wrote? Yeah. Um, I do really like what you said about like, public ownership mm. like it is totally a thing that I, like <laughs> uh, at some point and I don't know when it switched over it totally was like oh yeah this isn't even mine anymore like mm. people have had experiences with this song like in their lives you know and I, I had nothing to do with it uh, and it's really uh, humbling um, some, somehow I, I can't quite trace that um, um, but just to um, like it's it, uh, it, it makes me just like really happy I like giggle sometimes um, and um, 
and it makes me really, it, I really appreciate, I don't, man, I, I there's not, yeah, it makes me happy, it, it, it really humbles me, and it makes, and it just like, that feeling of like singing all together um, is like, is like my happy place. Like I don't need, uh, I don't like, it's weird. Like I, my, like when I, when I perform, I think, it, um, and I get to do this a lot more uh, when I play by myself. Like the goal is not for it to be like about like me telling you something. It's like creating a container for us all to like have an experience or to feel things. And so that's like the ultimate in that is just like, Oh yeah, we're all like singing in this together and everyone's like feeling positive vibes towards everyone else in that room. And that's like, I, it reminds me of like when, uh, <laughs> no, that's too, no, never. <laughs> I was thinking, well, whatever, I'll just go for it. I, this is like more grandiose than I mean for it to be as it relates to Rivers and Roads. But I remember thinking that when the when the eclipse happened like last august mm -hmm. like the the big the big one um i was with some friends uh in colorado um and in boulder which is like total hippie town total like psychedelics like whatever um just like we're all connected man kind of in a wonderful way that i like really love and appreciate and is like my home base in terms of like what i uh, believe um, um, and we all like drove out to this campsite in the middle of Nebraska um, to like camp by a lake and and like spend the weekend there waiting for the eclipse and we drove like right into the center of the path of totality and it was really wonderful and I remember like driving through like Nebraska where like the views are like are those all these like uh there's all these like very liberal people driving through like an area where there's all these Trump signs and like, and there's all these just like parking lots full of cars and, and everyone's just like on the same team, you know, like yeah. no one cares about all of the stuff that like normally divides them. They're just like super pumped about this like celestial event that's happening. Uh, and I was like, you know, just like such a good, like, man, things that can like make people be on the same team uh, like I'm really thankful for so I don't know so I feel like I have that kind of experience when people sing Rivers and Roads well and, and you should be I mean that whole album in general Coeur d'Alene is another song um, Rivers and Roads but I remember I would listen to that that's what got me through the transition from like high school to college and the more and more I talked to people even though that was my song that's what did the same for them and then I talked to one person who was like no I just like it because it was on Chuck and I was like wow <laughs> that's not the same thing but yeah. it is in, in a way which I, I always find interesting so yeah the public ownership of pretty much everything on that yeah. album it's beautiful I, I can't say enough good things about it yeah. um, but can you remember the last time you sat down and listened to that record because I'm sure that's a different context yeah. now listening to it and yeah. or even hearing the, the band perform some of those songs with you not on the yeah. stage yeah, um, I um, actually, I guess the last time I, I do know uh, the last time was when I, I, I moved into a house in Oakland, California, where I live now. Um, and I like had packed up, had all my records packed up and I was pulling them out and putting them on the shelf. And I had like the first record. And I was just like, whoa, so weird. We were such babies then. It's crazy. And I like pulled it out and put it on. And uh, and and like, as I think at that point, since then, I've like gotten to hang with uh, the the whole band and, and <laughs> kind of started like reconnecting in, in in some meaningful ways. But at the time, we hadn't really, and I just like was sitting on the floor in my new room, um, and I just like sent a little video of of like the end of the record playing to everyone. It's just like, and 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 I was feeling like very uh, just like oh guys yeah nostalgic and like man like i wish i uh, yeah i just like a, a desire for like closeness for all of those people again um so yeah i do have a very clear picture of when of when i last listened to it and it was it's still like i it sounds great it does and th yeah. to be honest that was the same thing when i last listened to it, the same desire of the closeness of the people that i was with when i was listening to that record so i think that that's really cool that 
that's a shared experience. Nice. Well, I know that you have a show to play, and trust me, I could do this all night. But uh, <laughs> I'll make this my last question. Uh, who are you listening to right now? Um, I saw that you interviewed uh, Twain. Yes, before they opened for Big Thief, which oh, is... Oh, I also love Big Thief. Yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, that, that whole situation that's happening with those guys uh -huh. is, oh, yeah. is pretty magical. Um, and I really love... The, have you heard the band The Weather Station? Yes, they're playing Newport Folk this year. Yeah. I cannot wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Weather Station, Twain, Big Thief... Um, there's a lot of really wonderful bands in the in the Bay Area uh, that that I've been like um, super stoked to like get to know. I'm going on tour with a couple of my favorite songwriters, Chelsea Coleman and Aviva Lipkowitz, oh, uh, which d who don't have records yet, but I'm just like I like uh, are good friends of mine in the Bay Area. Um, like I'm like very hyper local right now i don't have a lot of like uh i haven't been following what's happening but twain big thief weather station i can't think of i can't think of anything and then just the bay area in general has a lot of really wonderful things happening so well there we go uh no hyperbole this has been one of my favorite conversations ever josiah thank you so much for the time today you're very welcome thank you for talking